If you choose the wrong bike for the job, you're gonna regret your purchase. After helping people online for 10 plus years choose the right bike, I've learned that there's four key ingredients to choose the right bike for your specific needs. You need to get all four of them if you wanna choose the right bike because everyone is slightly different in their needs. And I'll explain why as I go through each of them. So here's my four step foolproof system for choosing the right bike. Number one, what type of riding will you be doing? Now there are three main kinds of dirt bikes. The first one is motocross bikes. This is for riding or racing on motocross tracks with big jumps or whoops, going around in laps and laps. And while they can be used for trail riding, they're best for racing on motocross tracks because they have the most power, the stiffest suspension, they're the lightest weight package, and you can get two or four stroke, which I cover some practical differences in another video. But if you're looking at bikes for adults, you got 125 and 252 stroke, otherwise there's the 250, 350, and 450 four stroke. Even though they're quite a bit different in engine size and power, they all have about the same seat height, which is 37 to 38 inches. And if you're under five foot nine or have short legs, legs like me, that's going to feel really tall, especially if you're just starting out. But at the same time, you don't really need to touch the ground when you're riding on a motocross track. Once you start and get going, you don't really need to put a foot down. This would be like the YZ125, CRF 250R, or 450SXF. You can ride them on trails, but it's going to be a lot harder because the snappy power makes it hard to control, and the stiff suspension is going to feel harsh, and you're going to get fatigued a lot more quicker. Number two type of dirt bike is a trail bike. And inside of the trail bike category, there are three main kinds of trail bikes. The first one is a air-cooled trail bike. Uh, these are generally four-stroke air cooled engines. They have less power, a lower seat height, softer suspension. They require less maintenance. This would be the CRF 250F or like the KLX 230R. They have a lower seat height, about 35 inches or so, which is great if you're shorter or if you want a lower seat height, which is great for building up your confidence because you can touch the ground more easily. The second type of trail bike is an enduro bike. And these are based off of the motocross bike, but they have an engine that is smoother, a suspension that is softer, they have a headlight, tail light, a kickstand, so they're a lot more trail friendly than a motocross bike. They're a lot easier to ride because of the smoother power and the softer suspension is going to soak up the bumps a lot better. This would be like the Yamaha WR250F or the KTM 250 XCW. These are a great upgrade if you're coming from the air-cooled trail bike because they have more power, a better suspension, more suspension travel, but they aren't quite as aggressive as a full-on race bike. Then the third type is the cross-country enduro bikes. And they're kind of in between the enduro and motocross bikes because they have snappy power, stiffer suspension than the enduro bike, but still softer than the motocross bike. They don't have lights. They have minimal equipment for trail riding to make them as light as possible because they're better for racing or more aggressive riders. This would be the CRF 250RX, the KX 250X, and both the enduro and cross country bikes, they have the tall seat heights like the motocross bikes around 37 to 38 inches. So they're gonna be really tall if you're under like five foot nine and you're riding trails where you're riding low speeds and you have to put a foot down, uh, it's gonna be harder to reach the ground. And these two generally require a lot more maintenance in the long run compared to the air-cooled bikes. And then you got the third category, which is dual sport bikes. And this is the kind of do-it-all bike that can ride on the street, uh, ride on trails, go across country. They do a little bit of everything, but they aren't really great at anything. So I would only recommend them if you need a street legal bike. Maybe you're commuting, maybe riding gravel roads, maybe you need to ride your bike to the trails because you don't have a truck to haul it. Whatever it is, if you need a street legal bike, uh, dual sports come uh, for anywhere from like 150 cc all the way up to 650 cc. They're great for doing like lightweight adventure rides or like the BDR rides and they're generally very reliable but they're noticeably heavier. Uh, the suspension is kind of lower technology like the air-cooled trail bikes and they don't have as much power. They're meant for being reliable, low maintenance, and easier to ride while being able to carry some luggage. Step number two, what is your experience level? So if you're a beginner and you only want to ride off-road, you don't need a street legal dirt bike, I highly recommend you choose an air-cooled four-stroke. And there's a few reasons why. 
Number one, the power is very tame and very smooth. On this bike, they have very smooth power that's predictable. It's a lot easier to ride on, learn how to use the clutch, shift gears, ride at lower speeds. You'll be able to build up your confidence and your riding technique a lot quicker as opposed to skipping ahead and riding an enduro or motocross bike thinking that you'll grow into the power. But you might find that if you're riding trails or low speeds, it's going to be a lot more aggressive a lot more snappy and jerky with the throttle so even though it's possible to learn on those it's just a lot easier on these uh, the suspension is a lot plusher so you won't be able to do big jumps on them but when you're riding at 5 10 15 miles an hour it's going to soak up those bumps a lot more making it more comfortable you're not going to get fatigued from getting bounced around by the stiffer suspension on the race bikes number three is there a lot less maintenance basically you fill them up with gas you change the oil when it's dirty and you clean or replace the air filter when it's dirty. So you check the chain and that's most of the maintenance that you're going to do on these. You can go years without even having to open up the engine to rebuild it. And if you're worried about outgrowing one of these beginner or girl bikes in six months, just know that the resale value is very good on these, better than the race bikes. So if you buy one of these that's just a couple years old for four grand. You can sell it probably six months or a year later for about the same price. And you can upgrade your macho race bike. And if you want personalized help with choosing the right bike, I do offer one-on-one -on -one consulting over a video call. If you're interested in that, click the link in the description below. Step number three, what is your height? If you're five foot six with a 27 inch inseam like me, then you're gonna want a lower seat height. The CRF 250F has 35 inch seat height, which is about ideal for me. 34 to 35 inches is good, but if you're closer to that five foot height range, you might wanna step down to a 125 uh, small wheel or big wheel, like the CRF or TTR 125 or even the KLX 140. Number four, what's your budget? If you want something that's under two grand, you're probably gonna be looking at something in the 90s or 2000s, whether it's an air cooled trail bike or a motocross bike. If your budget's two to three grand, then you can probably look for something in the 2000s to 2010s. And if it's three to five grand, you can probably look for something that's one to five years old. And if it's above five grand, then you can maybe even consider a new bike if you don't wanna deal with the hassles of buying a used bike. And if you wanna know what to look for when buying a used dirt bike, whether it's a two stroke or four stroke, you should check out these videos right here. I'm Kelly Fagan from MX Hideout. Ride safe. Have fun.